Hey guys, Joe here. This is the last time I'm going to try to film this, so bear with me as we try to run through this in one shot. Kimbers, I like them. If you're new to the channel, you know that I've had a few and started with a Kimber Warrior quite a while ago. And then the most recent one I had was the Kimber Lightweight Arctic Custom, which was a five inch framed gun. I was at my buddy's pawn shop the other day and he had this guy sitting on the wall. Well, not the case, the firearm actually. And I saw it and I went, ooh, I'd really like that. So what I wound up doing was I had to trade my other Kimber in order to get this Kimber because unfortunately I'm not a big enough channel to get enough money to just be able to indiscriminately buy firearms. If you'd like to help the channel grow, don't forget to get subscribed to all the good stuff and that will allow me to keep more firearms for the channel. But as it is right now, sometimes I need to trade in order to get upgrade. What I've done here is I've gone from the aluminum frame lightweight arctic to the full steel aegis elite custom it's a pretty nice one first we'll show it's clear nothing in it nothing in it and we'll take a look at the box comes in a hard case most of them do inside it came with one magazine i traded out the kimber mag for a shooting star i just prefer the shooting stars i think they feed better it came with a bushing tool and underneath here you have your paperwork and your replacement fiber optics. Normally it comes with a gun lock too, but it wasn't in the box. I forgot to ask if I can put my buddy's shop's name in the description. I will ask if I can. I will just put that down there when this video comes out. Back to Le Firearm. What we have here is an all stainless, or all steel, 1911 chambered in 45 ACP. So it meets a lot of the criteria for the traditionalist out there. However, this is a entry high-end 1911. And what I mean by that is you can buy a reasonably optioned out 1911 starting from about 500 bucks with the TSOS or the Gerson line. That is where I would say entry level. If you're trying to get around 400, you're going to get a GI. Spend the extra 100 bucks, you get things like removable sights, things like that, that are upgrades right out of the box that you're going to wind up doing anyway. When you hit about 750, you can get stuff like the lightweight Arctic I had, because that MSRP'd at 750, or when the Desert Eagles, the G1s, or, or the G models are available, they were around 750. I think the price has gone up due to availability. And there are a couple other manufacturers that make a $700 to a $900 1911. I consider that mid-range. 500 is entry, 750 to 1,000 is mid-range. Everything over 1,000, I consider a high-end 1911. And there's no arguing with that fact. There's so many 1911s over $1,000 that under $1,000 is mid-range. I know some people find that hard to believe, but we're not talking Glocks. We're talking about, well nice guns and that's coming from a glock owner so <sighs> go ahead and throw all your hate out there anyway let's take a look at this guy kimber introduced this version of the aegis in 2018 this is a five inch gun that's why it's a custom for kimber custom just means full size gun has their aex checkering on it which is pretty nice it has a bobtail to the grip uh, bobtail, fastback, whatever you want to call it. Sig calls it a fastback. I call it a bobtail. The theory behind it is that it fits in your palm better. I can honestly say I never really noticed a problem with the standard grip, but this does actually fit very naturally into your hand, and I really do appreciate that. It has front strap checkering from the factory, which at over $1,000, it should I actually think guns in the $700 range should have front strap checkering, but at $1,000 plus, everything should. And the back strap is actually lacking checkering. It has some striations, but it needs some real checkering. Thankfully, companies like Dan Wesson and Ed Brown, they make back straps that are checkered, so that will probably get changed out at some point. These are the factory G10 grips with a generous thumb cut. I really like the way G10 feels. It's very grippy and it can look really cool the way it's manufactured. You do have an extended mag release there. Magazines are drop free. And as I said, I swapped out my stainless Kimber for a stainless shooting star. I really like these. I also like Ed Brown and Chippy Mac or Chip McCormick magazines. Full length guide rod. Say what you want. Some people like them. Some people hate them. I'm indifferent. However, if I were to put a compensator on here, it's a little bit more difficult to run a 
full length guide rod because it's open on the end so you can't really take that off very easily you'd have to swap out to a half length guide rod has front and rear fiber optic sights and they are different color front and rear which makes them easy to differentiate and pick up and this one is semi flat front the lightweight had a ramped rear sight so it was less likely to snag on a holster this one looks like you could actually manipulate it on the front of a gun belt or something or a table enhanced beaver tail safety it has the larger pad here kimber makes the entire thing the enhancement unlike some companies that just have a small pad kimber or uh, rock island t sauce etc that makes it really easy to get your hand on the grip safety because you have to activate the grip safety otherwise the gun doesn't fire single action only of course it has a skeletonized hammer skeletonized trigger it is an adjustable trigger whoever had this before me has the screw set all the way back so it's the shortest possible travel on this trigger i like that i like to have as short a possible trigger as possible slightly extended uh slide lock slide release and a slightly large manual safety not ambidextrous but that's fine uh, when i shoot left-handed on one of these i can just over the top do that i like the checkering i wasn't sure if it was going to be really grippy or not but as you can see even with my poor hands i can easily manipulate it from the front or the rear it has their Kim Pro finish, and this gun does have quite a few rounds through it. I'm not sure what the exact round count is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was over 500, and it seems to be holding up extremely well. Yeah, what else can we say here? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take it apart. Before we do that, let's go ahead and do a good safety check. Dink, 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 dink. Go ahead and drop it and lock the manual safety to the rear position. Actually, let me show you the trigger real quick. That's it for take up. And then the website says four pounds. It actually feels probably a little bit lighter. I can't find my trigger uh, weight gauge. I set it aside and I lost it. Oops. But yeah, I'd say it's every bit, probably three and a half pounds, four at the max. Could also be because the adjustment screw is all the way back that it's short stroking basically not short stroking but you know what i mean very smooth i re-oiled it after i cleaned it but all the finish is still on the gun so i don't think that it would be much less smooth even than out of the box lock the safety in position you're definitely going to need this tool and be careful i've already launched my spring twice as I said, I did take it down and cleaned it. Take your spring out, drop your safety, bring it back. You always want to be careful on stainless guns or black guns because you could get the idiot mark very easily and you don't want that. Go ahead and take your guide rod out. And go ahead and pop out your barrel. Like I said, I just recently cleaned this one, so it's probably got more oil on it than it should, but lube never hurt nobody. Taking a look at the barrel, it's very nice. It's got a 16 to 1 twist, I think it is. Very nice rifling inside. And like I said, it definitely has a round count on it, but I don't think it was abused. I think it was just taken probably to the range and shot lightly. But as you can see, very clean. Looking at the slide, you can see from however many rounds it's got through it, it did remove some of the finish on the firing pin tube, but the rails themselves have no visible wear. The lug has no visible wear on it, and just the overall finish is very, very nice. This just means that it was a nice tolerance when it was assembled. Taking a look at the frame, you'll see this is a Series 70 style. What the Series 70 means is that it does not have a firing pin block or a drop safety, for those that like to call it that, in the later guns. And there are some Kimbers that have them. They have the Series 80 style internal. And I was corrected once, that's why I always say style, which has a firing pin block, which includes four to six parts, depending on which version of the safety they're using. 
and it has an additional thing, much like a Glock or many striker fired guns or most guns basically nowadays that has to push something up in order to allow the firing pin to go home. This gun does not have it, thus preserving the utmost 1911 trigger feel. Like I said, full length guide rod. I could take it or leave it. I might short stroke it by putting in a couple of bushings in here, which makes it a little bit faster because it tightens up the spring, but you could also compensate by just putting a stiffer spring. You do have to consider what you're doing when you do that though, because you might have to change the spring for the main spring to compensate uh, for timing issues. And it gets a little complicated. So just buy a whole kit if you're gonna mess with your spring rates. Let's go ahead and reassemble it. Take your barrel uh, link down position, slide your barrel in, take your bushing, start it now so that you don't forget it later and you have an embarrassing moment when you can't get it put back together. Take your guide rod, put it in, make sure your bushing or your link, I keep calling it a bushing, your link is in the up position so that it doesn't do what I just did there, which is interfere. Oh boy, one of those days, there we go. Hold your gun like that, take it, slide it on, go ahead and bring it back. Make sure that the link is visible or actually invisible so you can't see it while it's in there. That means it's probably lined up. Take your slide lock. I like to do this to check. If the barrel can't move, that means that the link is in the right position. Bring it back to the the assembly notch, which is the second notch here. Lift up, make sure that the slide lock slide release is not rubbing on the side of the frame. Go ahead and lock it back into position. And this is gonna be the hard part because this spring is so damn tight that it may go flying. So please bear with me as we try to do this on camera. Like I said, don't forget to check out Liberty Arms and check out some of the other videos on the channel and tell me how dangerous I'm being. Ah, nope. Ow, there we go. Oof. Yeah, that, that can hurt. Uh, once you've done that, then you can use your bushing tool. Woo, tight, tight, tight. So, I traded my Kimber, but I bought a Kimber. So, technically, it was a net zero upgrade. Oh, I don't think I talked about it yet in this video. Price. This gun is still available new in 45 ACP for $1,165 on Kimber's website. Now, if you buy it from Kimber, you're going to pay tax, shipping, and FFL. So, realistically, this is going to cost you anywhere from $1,200. Twenty to thirteen hundred dollars, depending on which store does your FFL. Sometimes you can find them on sale. You usually find things like the GFOs, which were the cheaper green fiber optics, or the TLEs twos, or the cheaper guns. This is entering into their higher end market, and at twelve hundred dollars, it's probably the most valuable nineteen eleven I've bought. Uh, I've reviewed a Nighthawk Custom, which was a forty five hundred dollar gun, but this is my first over $1,000 1911, and I can't wait to see what I think of it. Obviously, I didn't pay that much for it. I'm not willing to pay that much for a gun, personally. The most expensive gun I think I've actually bought was my Banshee, and that was barely $1,100. Yeah. Anyway, we'll take this to the range, see if it shoots like a $1,200 gun. I'm still going to take the P322 out and shoot it, because I haven't done that yet, as well as a customer's Glock 22 that I have to fix. So come on back for those videos. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. Sorry, this one was a day late, but you'll get all your videos. Just come on, calm down. Leave me a thumbs up. That'll motivate me to do it. And as always, I'll talk to you later.